Static stiffness decreased by up to 17% after applying this one simple hack at the beginning of every flexibility session. Today, I'll reveal 10 simple and easy to use concepts and techniques anyone can apply in order to make their flexibility training more effective, to save time, and to burst through plateaus. 99% of people don't utilize all of these 10 techniques and with that waste time and leave precious gains on the table. So I'm gonna walk you through them today. We're gonna to examine things such as what time of the day is the best for you to stretch, if and how much nutrition can actually affect your flexibility, and of course, how much body temperature has to change in order to have any kind of influence on your available range of motion. My name is Coach Bachmann, and I'm an athlete and coach here in LA. These are some of the tricks my clients and I use to get flexible and to stay flexible on a very busy schedule. I run an online business, I do in-person coaching, and I'm in the process of opening my own studio. Plus, I've got family. Every single moment that I spend stretching has to be effective. If you freeze water, it loses all of its elasticity. If you heat up a metal beam, it melts. Your muscles are very similar to this. A 2013 study at the Loma Linda University examined 20 healthy female and male subjects. They wanted to find out if heat would change the flexibility of a ligament. They tested mobility in room temperature after applying ice packs and after applying heat for 20 minutes. They came to the conclusion that after applying the heat in comparison to after applying the cold, ligament mobility increased and the force needed in order to move the ligament decreased by up to 25%. It is therefore safe to assume that the room temperature of the room that you're training in and your body temperature are extremely important to your flexibility training. Here's a little secret tip. Find yourself any kind of heat cream and some neoprene wraps. The neoprene wraps are gonna keep the heat inside of your body, but you have to proceed with caution. The heat is gonna make you feel significantly more flexible, yet your body is not more flexible than what it was before. So only stretch a little bit more and a little bit further when applying the heat. This works especially well when training your back mobility. Breaking a sweat before you start to train will absolutely help. It's quite easy. You can do some rope skipping, you can go for a jog, but you can also go to the sauna or hit the hot tub put on really nice and warm clothes afterwards and get your stretch going. Aim to increase your body temperature by one to two degrees every time before you stretch. Ah, finally, nice and warm. Nothing better than a good session of Netflix and stretch. Well, actually, no, you really should focus on the details of your flexibility training because it's not that simple. Yeah, but you see like this, at least I get it done and it's not as boring. Now, of course, getting your stretches done is better than not doing them at all. But like I said, the details matter Flexibility training is really not that simple. Get rid of your distraction. In my next point, it's gonna become extra apparent why it is so very important that we stay focused during flexibility training. A beautiful way of looking at flexibility is that we're all born flexible, but our muscles don't trust the brain enough to relax, to disengage, and to allow the joint to go into a deeper range of motion because they're worried the brain will push too hard and injure the joint. In other words, the muscle simply doesn't trust you with your ability to move deeper. You basically need to learn to actively relax the muscle that you're stretching whilst engaging all the surrounding muscles to stabilize the position. Simply actively focusing on this every single day is already gonna help. But incorporating weighted and PNF stretches is gonna help you even more identify the muscle that's being stretched. In 2019, a study was conducted that I personally found extremely interesting and very helpful. They tried to determine if Dynamic stretching had a direct impact to hamstring mobility. They tested 24 healthy subjects immediately after 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, and 90 minutes after performing dynamic stretches. Their range of motion increased by seven to 10% and was sustained for the entire 90 minutes after the test. Their pain tolerance also increased by 10% but returned back to the baseline after only 30 minutes. Passive stiffness on the other hand decreased by 7.9 to all the way up to 16.7% and returned to baseline only after the 90 minutes. It is therefore safe to say dynamic stretching should definitely be the first thing that you do in every single flexibility training session. You want to use these dynamic stretches to warm up the movement patterns that you're about to train. You want to be specific. If you're about to do some back bends, you don't need to use dynamic stretches to warm up your hamstrings. You can also conclude from the study that your main session after your dynamic stretches shouldn't be longer than 30 minutes and should never be longer than 90 minutes. Once done with your dynamic stretches, continue with smaller stretches 
to warm up the movement pattern further, to warm up your flexibility for the day, but especially to warm up your mind-muscle connection. Picture this, you wanna do your very first calisthenics workout. You've been preparing well. You watch some videos on YouTube, you know what you have to do. You put on your training gear, you head to the beach, you head to your calisthenics park, it's game time. You wanna take this serious, so you know at the end of your session, you should do a couple of stretches to feel good and to stay healthy. Problem is, you didn't actually research the stretches and you're not paying so much attention to how you're stretching. Your form is not great. You wake up the next morning and your back hurts. The only thing that has changed in your life is that you did calisthenics training yesterday for the first time. So your logical conclusion is, calisthenics is bad for you, it hurts my back. When in reality, it was the hamstring stretch that hurt your back because your form was off and your back was very rounded. It becomes your very apparent that form in your flexibility training is not just important to make flexibility training effective, but especially to make it healthy. The beauty, especially with static stretches, is that you can take your time, and you can really focus on form and make sure you get it right every single time. Now here's what I want you to do. For every stretch that you do, I want you to have a list of cues. Don't just have them in your head. Write them down. Be precise about them. And then every single time that you get into the stretch, you work through your cue list one cue at a time. Make sure to never add more than one new cue per exercise per workout. Magnesium supports healthy muscle functionality. We all know this. One of the main functions of magnesium is to block the calcium uptake inside of the muscle. This will allow your muscle to relax more after contracting during a tough workout. Additionally, it is believed that supplementing magnesium can help for people who tend to have more muscle cramps. It is easy to see that magnesium plays a huge role when it comes to muscle relaxation. It is therefore safe to assume that magnesium will help you get more flexible if your muscles are rather tight. Additionally, it is also believed that supplementing vitamin B and C can further help you increase your flexibility gains faster. When we're stretching the muscle elongates, we're creating micro tears in the same way we would when we're doing strength training. So just like with strength training, it's gonna be essential that we have a protein rich diet in order to heal the muscle after the flexibility training in order to recover faster in time for your next flexibility session after. Drinking plenty of fluids is not just essential to flush out toxins released during your stretches. But a 2017 study published in the European Journal for Sports and Exercise Science tested 19 male runners. And they were trying to find out if hamstring mobility is directly related to the level of hydration. On average, when hydrated, these 19 runners gained five centimeters in their forward fold, 10 degrees in their straight leg raise, and general posterior stiffness decreased by almost 50%. Training hard cannot outwork poor nutritional choices, but a well-balanced diet can support you and your body at the gym. Your flexibility training is exactly the same thing. There's no magic pill that's just gonna make you flexible from today to tomorrow, but you can absolutely maximize your gains and further support your body. The human body is truly fascinating. The eye sees something, sends the information to the brain where it's being processed, and then through nerves and your entire nervous system gets shot through the entire body. So every single joint and finger can react with an instance to what the eye just saw. Exactly this concept you have to keep in mind when working on your flexibility, especially when working on more complex skills such as the front split that involve multiple joints and muscles at the same time. It is vital to remember that our body is a whole. Taking the front split, for example, I might be able to get my hips all the way down, but I realize that I'm leading towards the front. Now the simple solution here, of course, is to simply straighten out the upper body. Now I'm gonna realize my lower back is arching. So clearly that's not a solution. But I sit in my front foot all the time, I'm stretching my front foot all the time. What could possibly be the problem? We have to take a step back, pull a little bit up, where we can actually straighten everything out and then push back down. We quickly realize that the limiting point in this particular front split example was actually the hip flexor. Whenever you're working on complex skills, you have to break them apart. You have to analyze what every single joint of your body is doing during the stretch to understand which muscle might be holding you back. Find your weak spots, break them apart, and then work on them twice as determined. Pushing yourself in weightlifting is easy. You simply lift as much as you can at the required rep range and intensity. With flexibility, it's not quite that simple. You see, you have to find a progression that challenges you, yet that is easy enough where you can relax into the stretch with mild discomfort and perfect form. Yet, at the same time, you have to make sure the stretch is not too easy as it's not gonna bring the required results. To make matters worse, things such as nutrition, the time of day, 
And your position in the recovery journey play a huge role towards how much range of motion you actually have available. This means to a certain extent, you're gonna have to reevaluate how flexible you are every single day to make sure you choose the right progressions for the right exercises. Now I know, when I said today we're gonna to talk about saving time and making your flexibility training more efficient, there was at least one of you guys watching right now who had the genius idea of simply doing your stretches in between your main working sets. What's the harm of hitting a couple hamstring stretches between your bench or a couple adductor stretches while you're training weighted chin-ups? I get the idea, but here's the thing. I'm pretty sure by now you believe me that flexibility training is pretty difficult. Stretching in between sets of literally anything else means that you're not gonna be fully recovered for your next working set, plus you're pre-fatigued getting into the stretch, so your stretch is not gonna be efficient either. You try to get everything, but you end up with nothing. Don't stretch between your sets. You know when you're sore and you can't reach your end range of mobility? Stretching when sore is actually quite useless. You're not gonna get more flexible, and it's not gonna help you get less sore. Yet, foam rolling as a form of self-massage can and should have a permanent spot in your flexibility training. It's not gonna help you get more flexible right away, but it's gonna help you loosen up tight muscles and your fascia, and with that, make it easier to stretch. Additionally, foam rolling is gonna promote blood flow. It's gonna help you modulate your nervous system, reducing pain and allowing your muscles to relax more. By the way, if you're worried about what is the best time of the day for you to stretch, it's gonna depend a little bit on you. You basically wanna stretch when you feel the most flexible. For most people, that is at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, but there are exceptions. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for making your flexibility training more efficient with me. If you're ready to dive in, you wanna start training right away, then check out the follow along flexibility workout tag right here. If you wanna learn a bit more about the science of flexibility training, then check out my flexibility podcast linked right here. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Stretch responsibly.